Um, hi? So while I was scrolling on Twitter a couple of months ago, I saw a post made by Plumby that it had this interesting iceberg chart on it. And up to that point, I've seen my fair amount of iceberg chart explainings, like the conspiracy theory iceberg from Wendigoon, the Super Mario 64 iceberg from Sunflower and Mythos, the Need for Speed iceberg from Dustin Eden, and I think the GTA San Andreas iceberg from Dove 7. All these people I mentioned before are really experts of the topics that they talk about and I think I can do this as well because well I have like 8,000 hours on this <laughs> game so I feel like I've played enough and have a grasp on the lore of this game and all the theories that I, I believe I can explain all of the entries without skipping anything so I'll try to do my best okay so if you're willing to join me in this travel just strap in grab some snacks because this is gonna be a lengthy video and enjoy the Fortnite iceberg chart The Bunkers The Bunkers are structures located in specific points of the map that first appeared in chapter 1, but never really had an explanation behind them in that chapter. They seem to be made out of stone and metal, usually a bit hidden from the normal structures, yet still easily accessible if you want to see them by yourself. They are indestructible and they grant XP points when the player is on them for the first time in a season. In the comics of Batman Zero Point, the Bunkers play a big role in the lore of both the comic and the game. But I won't really dig on this, as it would theoretically count as a spoiler. Still, if you want to learn more, you can check out one of the several videos on YouTube reading this comic so you don't have to bother looking for stock on Amazon. Sapatron the Sapotron is a weapon that is only found in Save the World. It's a sniper rifle that is powered by energy cells, a type of ammo that is only found in that game mode. Strangely enough, despite being a Save the World exclusive, it found its way into Battle Royale way early on the beginnings of Chapter 1 Season 1, where it was enabled for a really short period of time. Players could get this weapon by looting supply drops, of course dealing with a random chance for the gun to spawn. This weapon would only spawn in the legendary variant as it was the only one inside the battle royale code. It dealt massive amounts of damage, and it could be really overpowered considering nobody really knew how to build at the time. Still, after a bit of time, Epic decided to completely remove this weapon from the game mode and it was never seen again. The Seven The Seven is a group of characters in the battle royale lore. They are responsible for the events that led to the creation of the Chapter 1 Season 4 Rift, the Chapter 1 Season X Black Hole, and most recently, the Foundation being the leader of this group, having the power to control and contain the Zero Point. It is believed that they were also the masterminds behind the Imagined Order, secret organization in the current Chapter 2 lore, with Dr. Sloan in charge of commanding this organization. As of Chapter 3 Season 2, all seven members have been discovered. This being in order of apparition, the visitor on Chapter 1 Season 4's Battle Pass, the scientist as the secret skin of Chapter 1 Season X Battle Pass, the paradigm being released on the Chapter 1 Season X event shop, the foundation being introduced in Chapter 2 Season 6 cinematic, and later released as the Chapter 3 Season 1 secret skin, the origin and the imagine being released at Chapter 3 Season 2 Battle Pass skins, and the order. The last member of the Seven revealed as part of a night item shop in Chapter 3, Season 2. Rocket Riding Rocket Riding is arguably one of the most popular features in this game. It allows you to be on top of the rockets that other players fire out of rocket launchers. It was initially considered a bug, since rockets weren't supposed to have neutral hitboxes on top of them. But after the huge wave of people attempting trick shots and original ways of eliminating enemies, they left it as an actual feature for people to enjoy. Later down the line, some people have attempted to replicate different types of rocket riding, some of them being bandages, sniper bullets, the IO scanner ammo, and much more. Bears vs Gnomes This entry refers to a hidden story that was featured in the second season of Chapter 2, following the introduction of the Spy War theme. It was first presented in the preparation phase, with both factions reuniting to discuss a plan of attacking the other. As the season went on, both ends of the war offered free XP to the players that completed a bunch of quests 
that weren't publicly explained in the missions page, so people that were interested had to research. After a couple of updates, both factions almost started a war in the east side of Wailing Woods. Was it Wailing Woods? Or Howling? No, Wailing. I mean, I'm just gonna say the woods. Both factions almost started a war in the east side of the woods, where the players had to intervene and avoid this war from happening. If players successfully avoided this war, in a future patch, you could see bears and gnomes signing a peace treaty, where you could celebrate and get some free XP points and set reward. After some time, both factions were thriving and living in peace. Kevin. Kevin is a character that was unexpected for a lot of people back in Chapter 1 Season 5. This mysterious purple cube first appeared in the desert of the first map. After a huge rift in the sky started landing lightning and some cacti that were in the zone, before Kevin came to life. Players could get free shields if they stood within a few meters of the cube, with the catch being that you could make the cube throw a lightning at a random player that was in this radius by shooting it. Kevin played a huge role in the end of Chapter 1 Season 5 and was the protagonist of Chapter 1 Season 6. And I hear you ask, where did he get this name? From the community. Kevin was not his canonical name. It was only named The Cube, before the community started calling him Kevin The Cube. It still holds a very special place in some people's lockers and hearts. And after we saw Kevin neutralized in the Operation Skyfire event, we, as a team, managed to revive Kevin into Bluevin, the new name for the Blue Cube. Hashtag Free Fortnite Hashtag Free Fortnite was a movement started by Epic Games after the game got banned from the Apple Store. Epic wanted to implement a different payment system so the prices of the V-Bucks could be reduced and customers didn't have to pay more for the in-game currency. After a couple of hours, Apple took notice of this move by Epic and decided to give them an ultimatum, where they had to remove this payment system or otherwise their game would be banned from the App Store. Epic, after getting the game banned from the App Store, decided to go in court against the giant Apple, and so far they seem to be winning. We may never know when the game will be back to the app store normally, but hey, at least we have it on GeForce now. There's an entire video made by the game theorists about this topic and Epic's true reasons behind the lawsuit. As per usual, links down in the description. Midas' is death. I know this topic sounds a bit dark, but it's actually not that horrible. Let me explain. In Chapter 2, Season 2, we had an event called The Device, with the protagonist being Midas, the leader of the agency. In this event, we escape from the loop, which is the name that is given to the place where the entire Battle Royale mode happens. As a result of this event, in the Chapter 2, Season 3 introduction cutscene, we could see Midas in a raft floating in the ocean as a form of punishment for his actions and for flooding the entire island. In the same cutscene, we can see a shark getting closer and closer to Midas, where he starts to swim desperately in an attempt to escape. Then he gets eaten. After this cutscene, it was believed that Midas was dead, as he returned in the shape of Shadow Midas in Chapter 2 Season 4, which was considered by a lot of people as his spirit form judging by the floating golden chair surrounded by candles in the top of the authority. I can't quite explain how Midas Rex was developed though, since we can see Midas alive in his brand new shining gold armor as a part of the Last Laugh bundle, but I can assume it's just a variant of the character and he's not really dead, since we don't see people actually dying in the game. The only instance of death in Fortnite is in the Batman Zero Point comics, but that's a topic for another time. Jonesy eats Billy this is one of the entries that I'm not pretty sure why it's here since it was a part of the main storyline cutscenes, but for those who don't know about this, in Chapter 1 Season 9 we can see Jonesy and Pilly entering a bunker in the story introduction cutscene. At first it seems like the bunker is a paradise, with a DJ set, gym, an arcade, and a fridge for the sustainability of the inhabitants inside the bunker. When they open the fridge though, they realize they don't have any food only an empty can. And this is where the cutscene takes a bit of a dark turn, as we can see Jonesy looking at Pilly a bit hungry. Some time passes, we don't know how much, and Sentinel opens the bunker to reveal the new look of Tilted Towers, called Neo Tilted at the time. We can see that Jonesy has some red paint on his left arm, wearing a cape made of banana peel and carrying the remains of Pilly inside a smoothie cup. In the loading screen visions, we can see Jonesy using more of this red paint to detail some of the drawings that he has made inside the bunker, predicting some of the future events. As for the Jonesy ate Pilly part, yeah, it's pretty much canon. There's an entire series of cosmetics based around Pilly skin being used as a cape and as grip for dual access that came out in the same season's battle pass. Heck, even MatPat from Game Theory made a video about how many calories does Pilly have if Jonesy were to survive by only eating Pilly without leaving the bunker. Link in the description below. Double Pump Removal 
The infamous double pump mechanic was an old trick that was used back in the first half of chapter 1, really popular amongst aggressive players that went straight into battle with only 2 shotguns and maybe some healing items. Some content creators like James Key have footage of using this mechanic with not 3, not 4, but the entire 5 inventory slots filled with pump shotguns. I don't fear death. Death fears me. And it had no cooldown of use between the different shotguns. When Chapter 1 Season 5 was entering the scene, Double Pump wasn't removed completely, but it was heavily nerfed because Epic added a cooldown when you switch from one shotgun to another, making this mechanic useless. The reason behind why this mechanic was removed is unknown, but it's likely that it was removed because it was way too overpowered and didn't make sense to be literally spammed to death with shotguns. Fable Cut Off Dyer's Tail Fable and Dyer, both Chapter 1 Season 6 outfits, share an interesting story. In the Battle Pass overview cinematic, Dyer is presented as a sort of ninja jonesy that slowly evolves into a werewolf. Then we can see this Fable outfit presented as a twist of the original Red Riding Hood story, but making her look like a werewolf hunter, going with a big axe behind Dyer. We can see in her clothing that she has the tail hanging from her belt, as well as having a tail in the glider from her set. It's not too far-fetched to say that she's a professional werewolf hunter, but I'm not sure if the tail on her belt or glider is the one from Dyer or from another werewolf. Which is interesting considering the wolf version of Dyer doesn't have a tail like the other animal skins. We also have a loading screen where Fable is shown hunting down some werewolves and several other menaces. So perhaps this particular tail is from Dyer, or maybe she has a collection of those, which is, uh, well, creepy to say the least. Hey guys, um, editing links here. I'm recording this audio like 4 a.m. because I'm editing this thing and I'm seeing that it's like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna release it as one individual video and then edit the other levels like um, with a small intro, the entries and then an outro to connect them all on a huge video like when I have all the levels ready. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna leave level one here. Thanks for watching and hopefully you stay around for level two. Bye bye.